114 LT telescope review. Today, I'm going to be sharing my personal experience with this increasingly popular and high regarded telescope. Ultimately, I want to help you find out if it is right for you. Now, before I begin, I just want to quickly mention that I did a lot of research before buying this telescope. I've also used it for several months now, and I've been putting it through the test in various different conditions to see exactly what it can do. So I'll be walking you through exactly what I have seen, so be sure to keep on watching just to make sure you get an idea as to what this telescope can uncover in the night sky. But for now, let me begin by sharing my experience and delving into the spec so you truly understand what this telescope was designed for. So just a quick one on unboxing and my first impressions. I was really, really impressed with how well packaged this was. Everything came in its own separate packaging. There were three interior boxes, all which uh, explain exactly what you got, got inside. So there's about 12 different components that you need to set up. Very, very impressed with how it all came. It's very, very well protected. And you can also store this away, away uh, for extended periods because of all that packaging, you can reuse it. So the setup was an absolute breeze, didn't take me long at all, about 10, 10 minutes I would say. And it's, yeah, all of the pieces were included and I just loved how simple it was. You get an instruction manual as well to follow. Um, I had my telescope ready within, as I say, 10 minutes. It's easy, it's easy to manoeuvre, it's lightweight, so this is with my left hand. So I believe the total telescope weight uh, the total kit weight is around 10.4 pounds, so it's not too cumbersome. It is relatively large though, uh, particularly if you're used to, uh, say, a travel scope. So just do bear that in mind. If I stand back, you get a better appreciation as to how big it is. Uh, but of course, the bigger the telescope, typically the more you can see. So that's all obviously a good thing. But for its size, I would say it is rel relatively lightweight. Now onto the technical specification, if we just delve into that. So the telescope has a 114 millimeter aperture and a 1000 millimeter focal length giving us a focal ratio of f9. So you're probably wondering what does that mean for us? Well I'll get into that in a second but it does come also come with two eyepieces so I've got the 25mm here and I've also got the 10mm in the accessory tray. You also get a Barlow lens as well if you did want to enhance the magnification. Um, the 25mm provides um, 40 times magnification and the 10mm offers um, a 100 times magnification and as I say you can complement that with the Barlow lens at the moment I've not got that installed but you can put that in into this uh, area here and then you put the eyepiece into that if you did want to kind of enhance your views the steel optical tube supports a uh, high 269 times and low 16 times magnification as well just bear that in mind the light gathering power is 265 265 times that of the human eye so really really good uh, to consider um, so what does it mean for us? Well, this telescope is particularly good for the moon and also planetary observations with a range of magnification options. Deep sky objects is not the best, but there are a range of objects you can see with this telescope, including uh, star clusters, open star clusters, uh, nebula, galaxies, etc. So I will delve into that shortly. Uh, but first, I do also want to touch upon the star sense experience. So I've got a separate mobile device here. I'm actually just gonna unlock it and I'm going to show you that. I'm really impressed by the StarSense app and it's one of the reasons why I got this telescope. So I've got it open here and it just shows you everything that is visible and that you can kind of observe. And if you click on one, so as an example, if I click on Capella, um, it gives us a description of exactly what Capella is. It also gives us some observing tips and what we can expect to see. And there's also a bit on data as well, which just gives us, uh, you know, it's different catalog names, a description, exactly where it is, visibility, is it all, the, all of the data you need to know. Um, so yeah, that, I found that really, really useful. But this app is absolutely brilliant, purely because um, you can see exactly what is uh, visible uh, in the night sky ahead of you uh, up above. So tonight's best objects, here we go, Moon, Jupiter, the Beehive Cluster, Andromeda Galaxy. So there's loads of different things you can observe and this app helps you find exactly where they are. And you can also set up the telescope to essentially show you what's only visible with your current condition. So I've got a nice clear sky uh, today and hopefully tonight so I can really delve into some of these. And then also like, if you keep scrolling down, there is an area, I believe, there you go, tonight's challenge objects. So if you wanna test yourself, then you also can do that as well. And some of these are absolutely amazing. So Uranus, Neptune, uh, etc. 
So I'm going to now talk about the pros and cons of this telescope. So the first thing I would say, number one, is the uh, ease of use. So it's absolutely perfect for beginners. So it's inc incredibly user friendly. It's ideal for anyone who's new to astronomy. The setup was straightforward, as I've mentioned. So you can start observing the night sky without any kind of complex preparations. I also, as I say, really like the StarSense technology. I think that's absolutely brilliant. It gives you accurate celestial navigation. Um, it, it, it saves the need for having to use kind of star maps and things like that as well. So it's really, really good, and I really, really like that. Um, I'd say it's a game changer for beginners. Thirdly, I think the accessories which you get are great as well in terms of the fact that you just get them free with the telescope. So the two, two eyepieces, the two times barley lens, and the red dot finder, which I haven't shown you as of yet. You also get the dock to put your uh, phone on as well. So that's all fantastic. Uh, I also think this telescope is a great price. I think it's really cost effective. I think it offers a lot um, and it's also relatively premium for its price. So if you if you entered the market at a cheaper level, um, some of it can re feel really kind of plasticky, but I actually found that this is actually really high quality for you know the components, the actual, how it looks, how it feels. Um, I think it's really, really good for its price. Um, now let's talk about some of the cons and the negatives of this telescope. Well, it does have deep sky limitations, so it's not ideal for distant objects. And that's just due to its lens and mirror design. It's not the best for, for viewing anything that's kind of deep in the sky. Um, users kind of seeking to explore distant galaxies and nebula might find these limitations a little bit restrictive of this telescope, but it wasn't designed for it, so just bear that in mind. Um, nextly, next, nextly, next, the mount stability. Now, I found it to be okay, but there are a few users who report that it needs to be a little bit steadier and maybe a little bit more robust. Um, so some have observed that it takes some time to settle after repositioning, which can be a minor inconvenience during observation sessions. I've not really noticed that myself, but I did come across that in my research. The eyepiece quality is another thing that comes up. Um, they, are, they are decent, they are great, um, but they're not premium, so you may need to upgrade them. That's just something to consider. So these are Kellner eyepieces, and they are great for, for beginners, but as I say, if you do want to upgrade them, then that will come at additional cost down the line. And then the last thing is the manual adjustments. So occasionally, you may need to do some fine tuning. Um, so although the StarSense technology is excellent at getting you close to your target, it doesn't always align perfectly. So this means you may need to make some manual adjustments to fine tune your view of certain celestial objects. So just something to bear in mind. Not something I've experienced too much, but it is worth considering. Now, what have I been able to see with this telescope? I've kind of touched upon some of them already, but in my time using it, I've explored the wonders of our solar system and beyond in a unique and personal way. So the solar system is really the, the benefit of this telescope, I would say. So observing Jupiter, I've been captivated by the ever-changing cloud bands and the mesmerizing dance of its Galilean moons. It's been an absolute favorite of mine. Saturn's rings are great to observe too. Uh, you get some great clarity that almost feels a little bit surreal. Um, Venus has been a constant source of fascination for me. Uh, you can observe its phases evolving from full to crescent, mirroring the lunar cycle. So that's visually striking. I would really recommend that you try and do that uh, if you do get this telescope. Um, looking beyond the solar system, where it is a little limited, uh, you can observe the Orion Nebula. That stands out as a favourite of mine. Uh, through this telescope, it appears as a mysterious great cloud, uh, hinting at the stellar birth taking place within. Um, the moon, of course, is absolutely fantastic to observe and because of its uh, relative proximity to Earth, uh, you can see the craters, the valleys and mountains. It never fails to amaze me, so I would recommend checking those out too. Um, the imposing uh, Copernicus crater and the vast Mare Imbrium are particularly striking through the telescope lens, so I would recommend um, trying to observe those as well. When conditions do allow for deep sky exploration, the telescope has unveiled a few wonders. So the Andromeda Galaxy and the Hercules Open Star Cluster are my favourites. Um, ob observing these decent objects from the cloudy core of Andromeda to the dense sphere of stars in Hercules has been an experience that I've particularly enjoyed. So, final thoughts about this telescope. You know, would I recommend it? Well, I personally think this is an amazing entry level telescope. It's ideal for beginners or as a gift to ignite someone's love for astronomy. However, if you have a little bit more to invest, you might consider a, a more premium option. But at this price point, I really don't think it can be rivaled. Um, the next star series is almost double the price and that's perhaps where I would go if, if you did have the extra budget. But 
I think at this price point, the StarSense Explorer 114 LT is absolutely terrific. I love the fact that it's able to reveal the intricate details of the solar system's planets. The app itself is absolutely amazing. I, I love using it. it. It's opened up so much to me um, and it's so much more convenient than, than uh, star maps and things like that. Um, so yeah, whether you're a beginner or a seasoned stargazer on a budget, this telescope offers a lot. Uh, and it's a really good way to get into astronomy. So yeah, hopefully this review has been useful. My Celestron StarSense Explorer 114 LT review. I hope this video was useful. If it was, please hit the like button. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below and I'll get back to you too. Do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and hit the alert button. There'll also be videos following this on what I've been able to see. I'm going into more depth as to my observations, so be sure to check that video out as well. With all that said, hope you have an excellent day.